Schwurgerichtssaal, der war damals schon sehr bedeutsam. Es wurden immer hier die wichtigsten Fälle verhandelt und irgendwie passt das jetzt heute auch ganz gut, denn die Fälle, in denen es um den neuen Roman unserer beiden Autoren heute Abend geht, die sind auch sehr, sehr verwickelt, verwoben und sie sind scheinbar unlösbar. Also genau das Richtige für einen Saal wie diesen. Freut uns, dass Sie gekommen sind und ich möchte gar nicht lange drum herumreden und unsere beiden Stargäste des Abends begrüßen. Herzlich willkommen in München, Ossa Marschall erstmal. Außerdem neben ihr Dave G.W. Perschau. Herzlich willkommen. Und wir freuen uns auch, dass wir für die deutschen Teile der Lesung eine der besten deutschen Krimi-Stimmen haben. Haben Sie Jürgen Stock als Schauspieler und In gewisser Weise ist es ja erstaunlich, dass wir an einem Freitag, den 13., sowohl unsere Stargäste als auch Sie hierher bekommen konnten. Das interessiert mich jetzt auch gleich mal. You're not superstitious, I'm because of Friday the 13th. No, no, I, I wish I was, because I think life would be a little more. Interesting. <laughs> What about your life? Yeah, I've been a shrek. I've been so wicked. But Swedish people are superstitious, aren't they? Ich glaube, es ist. Sie glauben auch alle diese Gespenst, hast du so? Und genau um dieses Buch geht es natürlich heute Abend auch hier bei uns. 
um, also had two kinder. You do have two children. When will you allow them to read your novels? Oh, they try to all the time reading on my computer screen. <laughs> they are eight and ten, so they know that they're not supposed to. So, but that makes them try really hard to do it anyway. I don't know when. When should you let children read stuff like that? When they're fifteen, sixteen, if they're interested. I, I, I don't know. Was mir an Orsons Roman in Frankreich den Neuen auffällt, sie beschreibt auf wunderbare Weise sehr viel Natur, also neben all der Brutalität, die es natürlich gibt und der Spannung, ist viel Platz für die Sonne, den Schnee, den Winter in Schweden. And you describe in a very exact and creative way the nature. So I suppose you love the nature and you live in the nature? Yeah, the nature plays a big part in, 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 the, in the books, uh, just like the, the characters and, and the people in the books. Um, The nature in the northern part of Sweden is very special to me. I don't live there anymore, but I, I constantly, you know, uh, have, I, writing kind of cures my homesickness a little bit. And you mentioned that you have worked as a tax lawyer for a very long time. Have you ever regretted having quit this job? No, never. Being a writer is the, is the best. And I'm telling you, if you work as a tax lawyer for the state and go to a party, Don't mention what you're doing. <laughs> But being an author, on the other hand, much better. Yeah. Also, this is a very thrilling start. It seems that you wanted to shock us within the first pages. Yes, and I shocked my father. He found the lake for me. I said to him, I need this lake. It's supposed to be in the mountains. It must be so deep that you that you can't discover a, a plane from, from the surface, but it must be so, so that you can dive on it. And, and he said, well, I know the light lake. Let's go to Vitamiyagi. And when we went there, it was this beautiful day. It was frosty, and, and the, the, the leaves were all red, and it was, the, the, the sky was, was clear. And I was thinking about how good it would be to have this beautiful nature, this description of nature, and this horrible murder in the scene, and my father said, what are you smiling about? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm thinking about Wilma and how she's clawing under the ice. And he looked at me and he said, God, I wonder what I did wrong with you. <laughs> Has he written your books? Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> It's um, a little bit unusual to tell the story uh, from the perspective of a dead young woman. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I didn't from the beginning. I, I had the beginning of the book as a, a teaser in the paperback uh, on, on, in the last novel. Uh, and, and, and then it was just told from the author's perspective. But she kind of, you know, she, she took her place and, and wanted some more space. And, and so I had to rewrite it. Do you believe in ghosts and dead living people? They've mentioned something like that before. Yes, I do. <laughs> Leif, excuse me, what are you doing? You're, you do have a German translation book over there? Yeah. yeah. Please explain. No, it's just a Taschenwörterbuch. In this book can man 32 Wörter finden. So viele braucht man nie. Das ist eine gute Hilfe, glaube ich. Ja, wenn man in Deutschland ist, natürlich. Ist es nicht so wichtig. But Leif isn't the only one being able to speak German. Osa was laughing too, so you're able to speak a little bit German too, are you? No, oh, I, I studied German for six years in school, but I can't speak it anymore. And, and you know, when you dream uh, that you lose control and you're just running through corridors and you know that you have to be in a meeting and you can't find the place, my German teacher always shows up on those <laughs> So going back to the book, um, natürlich sind die beiden Hauptfiguren der anderen Kriminalromane von Orsa auch wieder mit dabei, die Polizistin Anna Maria Meller und natürlich auch Rebecca Martinson, die Staatsanwältin. Um, what about these two women in this new case? Could you please tell us about their situation now? Uh, well, Anna Maria Mella is a little depressed because in the 
book before this one, uh, it ended with a shooting and her colleague blames her. So, so she kind of messed up and she feels guilty and she had, has always had very good relationships with her many colleagues, but now she kind of feels um, outside. And Rebecca, Rebecca Matteson, uh, my, my uh, lawyer, she, she works um, as a prosecutor in Kiruna and she's feeling a little better than she has because, because she, she's been really depressed through all the books. So, so, well, she's doing better. And she gets a dog, which is a nice thing. <laughs> you do have dogs too, right? Dog, yeah, I have a dog, and, and there are a lot of dogs, in, and I kill dogs in all my books, which is a sort of a problem. Readers, can, they don't care how many people you kill in your books, but you kill one dog. <laughs> <laughs> and you get the turns. This time, the dog has not to die. Actually, uh, no, it, it came close this time, but hmm, now you're revealing stuff, you know? Anna Maria and Rebecca, these two women, um, they do have a friendship, but sometimes they do have a fight and then they are friends again. How would you describe their relationship? As most friendships, I guess, uh, or a beginning of a friendship, that where you have a little uh, competition, you work wise, but also respect. But they are very different as well, but I think that they are kind of both finding each other. And your characters are, on the one hand, they are funny, then they are mm, serious, they are strong, and they are weak. So it seems to me that you try to avoid cliches when you create a character. What is your main purpose when you think about a character, a figure of your book? Well, thank you. I think that I, I think that's it to 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 uh, to write about real people and and how they are. And I can get so sick of reading about, for example good mothers, who are only mothers in, in books, for example, which I think is a very common cliche in, in, in books. So, everyone should be a little bit of both. And, and my bad guys are never entirely bad either, so. A 
um, ambition. I just, I just, you know, the story comes to me, and I, and I write it. But of course, your values show, and um, what you think about society, of course, shows in your books. But it's not my purpose of writing. I write for myself How and my mother. <laughs> How long does it take you to write one novel? Because you do have two kids, you do have a boyfriend, you do have one dog. <laughs> well, it takes about one and a half year to, to write a novel for me. And is it still a challenge, the fourth book? Or is it now routine for you? Oh no, never routine. Always, always difficult, always a challenge. I always call my mother and, and you know, she reads uh, as I go along and I said, oh, Please, is this any good? How is this? And, and she is like, in, in her sleep, she can say, it's very good, Elsa. <laughs> very interested, and I, I've been thinking about the last thing I've read all the time, and I'm very, very excited. <laughs> so, so she helps me out when I have low self-esteem. So, thank you very much for that, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you.